You were not meant to be a slave to the grind. You were not meant to trade your life force for money. You can escape gravity. You can unlock your life. You got this. Let's go. Hey, and welcome to Unlock Your Life. Appreciate you being here. I want to pose a question to you. If I were to offer you $400,000 a year to be a doctor, you had to work 40 hours a week, but that was it. You know, you got the weekends off, holidays, Christmas paid, vacation, $33,333 a month in income. Would you take that deal? I would say probably some of you would. Maybe you would. And I think that if you're passionate about being a doctor and you want to be a doctor, you're working on being a doctor and you care about that, the medical profession, then that's what you should do. However, if you're doing it for the money, I don't really care about being a doctor, but man, I want to make 400 grand a year and I don't care if I got to work 40, 50 hours a week and dedicate all my time and focus to that. I'm taking it. That's a mistake. There's something called the rat race that we're all familiar with or the hamster wheel. And essentially the premise is you're spending all of your time on this wheel and you're not getting anywhere. And if you took that deal, you most likely would be locked into that cap, right? Because you've got to trade all your time, effort, and energy to make that $400,000. Maybe you're in the same position. I've kind of blown it up a little bit to bring some hyperbole to it. But let's say you're making $50,000 a year or $80,000 a year. Really is inconsequential, but you're trading all your time for that. Maybe you're in a business and maybe the business is making you two or $300,000 a year. Yet the way you've structured it or the business that you're in, that's the cap. You're not able to make it uh, run without you. You're not able to push beyond that limit. So you're on that hamster wheel. And the thing about it is you're not making forward progress. I used to run a uh, construction company, Reality Construction, and I was on the hamster wheel. I really could not make it scalable. I couldn't do it without doing most of the stuff myself. And I ended up partnering up with a company called Allaire, which made things a lot better and a lot more scalable and a lot easier and put me on the trajectory where I am today. But before I did all that, it was like I would work and work and work. I would make about a hundred grand. It was pretty good money, but I would also spend a hundred grand because as you're making money, Hey, yeah, we can go on vacation. Yeah, let's buy the wife a a necklace. Let's get a new car. Let's do whatever we do. And that lifestyle creep kind of eats up everything. And so even if you make 10% more than you did last year or even more than that, it's sort of a not a consequential jump. And guys, this episode is focused on somewhat of a wake-up call. It's not really focused on being happy in the process and being happy in the journey. There's other episodes that address that. This is more so a wake up call because I think there's a lie that we tell ourselves about enough. Okay. When is enough enough? And I'm going to take the flip side of that and say, you're probably what you think is enough is not enough. Think about this. You're working your job. You're saving for retirement. You have very little in savings. You're not set up. That's the way I was. And let's say something goes wrong. Your air conditioner breaks. You do need a new car. You've got an unexpected medical expense. Your child gets cancer, God forbid, or it gets really sick. Let's say you've got to help out your parents, your mom and dad. You know, your father passes away and your mom needs financial help because they didn't plan for the future. Now you've got to take on that financial burden. Maybe you have a sibling that's in trouble or needs a a loan. Maybe your kid wants to start a business and you, you want to invest with them because you think it's a great idea and they're, they're going to succeed, but you don't have the money. So there's going to be a time where you're going to need extra resources, resources above and beyond that I'm just scraping by. I have enough to be comfortable, but that's it. This, I want to have enough money to be comfortable. I want to just have enough money to pay my bills is flawed thinking. And I think we all know that deep down when we're honest with ourselves to think that nothing's going to go wrong, that we're never going to have something, a bump in the road where we need extra resources or on the flip side of that, a massive opportunity coming our way. And yet we don't have the resources to capitalize on it because 
we're just getting by, right? We just have enough to just make enough and to just get by. So about four or five years ago, I read this book, The 10X Rule. You may have heard of it by Grant Cardone. And I wouldn't say I agree with every tenant in that book, but he did make a good point about this of understanding that things are going to take longer than you think. They're going to be harder than you think. They're going to cost more money than you think. Your rosy projections are probably going to be off and you're going to get hit in the mouth. And so you need to 10x your goal, 10x your action, 10x your thinking to get anywhere close to where you want to be. So what I mean by that is if you're trying to make 10% more next year, what is that really going to do? Is that thinking differently? Is that going to make a serious change in your life or anyone else's life for that matter by making 10% more next year? Most likely not. You got to start thinking radically different in that. How can I escape gravity? How can I escape these time constraints? How could I make $400,000 a year working one hour a week or two hours a week? and dedicating very little of my energy and effort to that. What does that look like? That's a completely different problem, and that's what we should be focusing on, not how can I work five more hours this week? How can I squeeze out 55 hours? How can I work my employees harder? How can I build my team and take on more and more pressure and stress and clients so that I can make 10% more revenue? That's the wrong problem to be focusing on. I want you to think about a spaceship. A spaceship going through space really is burning very little fuel. It's taking no energy. It can go for miles and miles. I mean, I think the International Space Station has been up there for I don't know how many years, but it's not taking a whole lot of fuel to travel hundreds and thousands of miles a year and in a, at a very fast velocity. However, it had to escape gravity. The spaceship has to escape gravity. The plane, you know, when it first takes off, is burning something crazy like 70, 80 percent of the fuel is burned up during takeoff. And you've seen those spaceships blasting out of Cape Canaveral. I mean, thousands and thousands of gallons of jet fuel just annihilated. And yet, once that spaceship reaches a certain trajectory or height, the gravity goes away. The pull goes away. Have you ever ridden a bike up a hill? It's extreme effort. You're pedaling and pedaling and pumping your your legs, and it's a lot of work, and you're doing the work. And yet, as you start to crest the top of that hill, the cycling gets easier. The pedaling gets easier going. And then, as you start on the downward trajectory, then it really starts to get easy, right? The effort is almost zero. And anytime you are pedaling, it's only making you go faster. And That's what I'm talking about, is you've got to get in a vehicle where you're not continuing to just pedal straight uphill, where the rocket is just burning fuel and burning fuel and burning fuel and never reaching outer space, never escaping gravity. So how do we escape gravity? What does that concept mean? I want you to do a little exercise, and it'll be simple, right? Just think about what do you need every month to make it, you know, you don't need to be skimping like, oh, I usually make about $6,000 a month. So I really just only need $4,000 a month. Like if it's, if you're making about 150,000 a year, then, you know, put that down 12, five or whatever the math is on that. Just put down whatever you need to make per month to be comfortable. That's your gravity, right? That's gravity. Anything that you're making from $0 to dollars or $150,000 or whatever number you pick, that's your gravity. But once you get beyond that in passive income, in income that you're not actively trading your time for, and I say passive income very, very loosely because you could be doing active income in a business that could become passive later, where you could take on a partner or you could sell off a piece of it, or you could put the teammates in place where it can run without you. I'm sitting across from a a coffee shop right now, Coastal Coffee Roasters. I know the founder, Brad, and he worked extremely hard in the first probably decade of this coffee shop's existence to get this baby off the ground. And now 
you know, I'm seeing a steady stream of people in and out and in and out, and they're buying bags of the coffee. They're buying cups of coffee. He's now got a brewery that's attached to it. He's got a little food. You know, they serve bagels and breakfast stuff. And this thing is very profitable. And is Brad there? Yeah. Every once in a while, Brad shows up. He shakes hands. He says hi. But for the most part, Brad is not roasting the beans and brewing the coffee and serving it up and ringing up the cash register. Like he's got a machine now that doesn't take a whole lot of peddling to generate revenue. And guess what? It's making a lot more money now than it did when he was pushing everything up the hill because he escaped gravity. So he got in the right vehicle, selling a product, building a brand. And after time, you know, that flywheel or that bicycle wheel or that spaceship got spinning fast enough to not need such massive effort to get it going, to pedal that bike. So I want you to think about that, where if the business that you're in, or maybe you're in a job, if it's just pedal, 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 pedal harder, or burn more fuel in the spaceship, and you're never going to get up the hill, and you're never going to get into outer space, you're doing it wrong. We're doing the wrong thing. That's what I had to see with my construction company. I was pedaling and pedaling and pedaling, and I was never going to crest over the hill. Allaire had a lot of systems and processes, and it was expensive, and it was painful, and it was a big change to kind of convert everything over to that. And yet, it allowed me to escape gravity. It allowed me to transition over to project managers and and take on a partner and sell the business eventually. And so that was something that I had to shift. Right. And the the business you're in, it may not be a bad business, but you need to be thinking, how can I be pushing everything off of my plate? How can I stop having to actively earn these dollars? Where can I get this business to so that I can escape gravity and the bike can go down the hill kind of with very minimal effort? You may or may not know, but I have a, a Facebook group, My First Million in Multifamily. And when we first started that Facebook group, my cousin Yaden and my business partner Yaden, it was difficult. You know, we invited everybody on our friends list. I mean, we were constantly posting and and trying to get people to join, posting into my stories. We were giving away money. We were giving away equity in our buildings to just get critical mass and get people to do it. And it was definitely pushing the bike or pedaling the bike straight uphill. But something started to happen when we hit really like five or 6,000 people in that group. It was insane. I mean, 30 to 50 to 70 people every single day started joining that group. And the flywheel started turning and we started cresting over that hill. And now, I mean, we've got 22,000 people in that Facebook group and there's people joining every day. And I'm not really marketing it or pushing it or trying necessarily to grow it. It's just growing. And from that, I'm able to have a base that I can build a brand off of. You know, we have a a course that we sell about how to buy multifamily. We have a mentoring group in there that's a monthly subscription. And the people in the big group join the paid group. And so it's, it's very easy to sell the product and find a target market because we escaped gravity, right? We got that brand so big and there's new clients coming into that Facebook group every week. And uh, it's really, really cool. And it was really hard to build at first, but now it's not hard. And I'm not saying don't work hard. And I'm not saying don't grind and don't push and don't put in the hours and put in the work, but just make sure you're putting it in on something that you can actually escape gravity. Make sure you're working on something that can scale, that can have exponential returns, that can be one to many And eventually maybe even be passive or something that you could sell off eventually. So that's it for today, guys. Next week, we're going to be talking about how hard work is not the key to success. You've always heard hard work is the key to success. Well, I'm going to break it down how hard work is not the key to success. So make sure you tune in. And uh, if you're loving the show or even liking the show a little bit, I really appreciate giving me a review. A lot of people are reviewing the show now, and it really helps. It helps the... um, the Apple algorithms and, and it just, it helps me, helps other people know that this is uh, worth listening to. So if you're enjoying the show, that's how you can help me is just give me a five-star review, 
uh, write some notes and comments on what you think and I would really appreciate it. I read every one of them. Okay guys, have a great week. Peace. This is the podcastfactory.com.